No matter where you've been in your life, near or far, anyone on the road to recovery has a well-traveled heart. Oh, every day. I've sat and wondered when the day will come when I don't think about it, honestly, and I don't know when. I think it'll be years down the road and you'll still think about this probably every day. It's been 180 days since Mayfield was hit. It skated over me enough, it ripped my roof completely off. Since Larry Nichols was hit by an EF4 tornado, Nichols is one of the few families left in this neighborhood on Mayfield's northeast side. In the whole neighborhood, there's only maybe, you know, in a block radius or two block radius, maybe four people at the most. So. Nichols says his next door neighbor left after the storm and never came back. I think everything the lady owns is still in her house too, I'm pretty sure. And six months later, you can see the neighbor's clothes on hangers and family photos still stuck to the fridge. I don't know really the story, you know, or anything like that goes, but there's still a lot of people who lost everything. Not 20 yards behind Nichols' back door, three-year-old Jalil Dunbar was killed when his entire home collapsed around him. Dunbar was one of 24 Kentuckians who died in Graves County from the storm. It just kills me knowing that a lady was laying over there, you know, probably holding her dead kid. That is, that's tough to swallow. In Mayfield, in this moment, you can see homes being built. Next to empty lots where homes used to stand. Next to houses too badly damaged to be saved, yet abandoned up until this point. It's an unnatural scene created by Kentucky's deadliest natural disaster. One hundred eighty days later, Dawson Springs residents share many of the same views. It's been a journey. It's hard to look around and hardly see anything. You know. Volunteers from Georgia are rebuilding Judy Gregg's roof. And as you can see, our house that we got now is where all the people are. Except Gregg and her husband only recently purchased this home back porch and this would have been in front of our house. On the night of December 10th, Greg and her family huddled in the bathroom of their longtime home just a few blocks away. They would be stuck there for hours. It was just there was so much debris around our whole house that we couldn't get out, you know. Hundreds of homes were damaged in a town of just 2,500. Six months later, Greg is one of the few in her neighborhood still here. Some are rebuilding, some some can't afford to. It was depressing for a while, you know, because you don't see nothing. The scars left behind are on the surface and below it. And because of both, Larry Nichols' heart weighs heavy. You know, still day to day, you know, struggle with it still. My kids, I when a thunderstorm rolls through, you know what I mean, they get tense. My 10 year old definitely, he, he's a nervous wreck when a storm blows in or anything like that. So, Undoubtedly, the last 180 days has taken the residents of Mayfield and Dawson Springs through every emotion. And of all the emotions he's felt. My wife and two kids, we was fine, lived through it. As long as he keeps arriving at grateful, Larry Nichols says he'll be okay. It's kind of mind-boggling to really think about it. Kind of feels like it's only been a few months, really. At, at times, you know, and at times it feels like it's been a long time. But The road to recovery is a journey, and how long the journey lasts is unknown. It's different for everyone. The destination for all, however, is a well-traveled heart. Jonathan Gregg, Spectrum News, 